Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program and the travesty that is untrained Kerbals. If you remember last time, we managed to get everything down on Juna only to face the problem of an untrained engineer so we could not repair anything that was broken in landing. We could not repack our chutes, we could not fix the rover wheels. Yeah, ev everything was just just not as I wanted. So I have a plan here, as you may be able to tell from this like excess of Kerbal carrying capacity here. I want to get as many Kerbals leveled up as quickly as possible. So we're going to use this kind of pig type design here. Whenever I use this lander cat, uh, well it's not really a lander clan, this command uh, pod on the front here, uh, it kind of, it reminds me of kind of pigs and stuff, especially if I ever get round to sticking ears on it, which I probably will by the end of this episode, as I do quite enjoy giving all my crafts a bit of a personality. But what this craft is designed to do is land on the moon and come back okay so that that's not the only thing these but this this particular segment here is designed to do everything else is going to be taken care of with like um like a lifting technology that we're going to have a great big great big rocket underneath it that's going to take it up to, to orbit then we're going to have another rocket in between that and this that will take it to the moon then this just needs to land now i give you the badass deployment aerospace shuttle because you know that that's a, a badass um, acronym, right? Yeah, badass acronym. Anyone? No. All right. I'll, I'll just, I'll just sit here with that. So, given its rather limited scope of like use, there is only really one thing we need to do in the testing process of this. That is, fill it up with kerbals or with three kerbals, as was the case here, because we couldn't really get any more kerbals. We didn't have any more hired. And just throw this up and make sure that the parachutes work. Uh, as simple as that. Uh, the to weight ratio on kerbin is not good enough, so we just had to burn off enough fuel till it lifted up, and just made sure the parachutes work because that that's the only thing that we have to do in kerbin gravity here. Okay, so next I'm trying to think of how we are going to get this thing to the moon now i've decided that the way to do this is with overkill as we all know there is no kill like overkill and maybe doing double the, the power that we need to do will just about get us there uh so this little stage that i put down just underneath the module that is of course our descent stage or our transfer stage rather that's the bit that's going to get us from uh curve in orbit to the moon Though that probably isn't what's going to work here, because if you now watch as I'm building the main lifting technology, I strap a massive amount of fuel to this, uh, much, much more than I reckon I need, um, mainly because I was worried about not doing enough. So yeah, I, I, I decided just to, as you can see, even now, put even more on. Uh, uh, now that I'm really thinking about it, possibly a bit much, we might tweak it down a little bit by the time it comes to actually doing this, but the first thing we need is a crew. Um, well, there's enough room in the capsule for three entire crews. Now the problem with that is if we come to the, 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 the astronaut complex here, look how many scientists there are. I could literally grab two crews, including Riven, Richmond and Frank that we already had. Uh, and then we've got um, Hadoukai, Jebber and Fredman. And that is it. There are no more engineers, there are no more, si uh, pi no more pilots just got a, a board full of engineers and I'm not sure what we're going to do about that. Okay, so whilst we're waiting for the astronaut complex to refresh, we're going to come over to Juna and try and do something maybe a little bit silly. Um, there has not even been a single orbit since we landed down on the on, with the, the lander can and with the rover here and maybe I'm thinking with a little bit of RCS ap applied up at Apoapsis and with some like superior gliding skills when we're in the atmosphere, maybe we could get this glider down with those two two vessels. Uh, first off, a little bit of shuffling around to do. Uh, I noticed when I decoupled from this pushing unit uh, and put down my maneuver node, I was gonna have to be pushing my way through the pushing unit when I wanted man maneuver mode to go happen. Uh, not great, not great at all. I also noted that this was taking so slow that there was no way that the maneuver node was actually gonna get completed in the time that I had allowed it. So I scrubbed the maneuver node, uh, took a look at my normal position, tilted ever so slightly retrograde so that when I'm pushing the orbit round, I'm not also pushing my periaps up because remember what we're trying to do is get down into the atmosphere as well as turn the orbit inclination. Um, and then I just went for it until I nearly ran out of monoprop. I, was, I got it down to about like maybe 10. I decided that I wanted to keep a fair amount of it so that we could uh, have any maneuvering that needs to be done either on planet or on the way there. Uh, and, and it's all looking good. 
Uh, we take a small moment to have a note of the alarm clock, see how far away the EVE mission is. This obviously will have to uh, get started before we can bring these guys back. Hence why I want to level up all the other Kerbals down at, down at our base. Uh, and it's time to start thinking about how we're going to get through this atmosphere. So first off, I want to change it to Chase Cam, mainly so that I know I'm orientated in the right direction. Uh, the, the, the worst thing that could be happening here is that uh, with the orbital cam being sort of upside down relative to the, the vessel, obviously not so much to the planet, but to the vessel, I could probably get my orientations messed up, start turning myself in the wrong direction because uh, spatial recognition whilst looking in the wrong direction can be a bit funny at times. And, and now I'm banking hard. Now I'm just kind of working through my technique here. Like how far away can I look away from my, from my prograde marker? Uh, it turns out it's actually quite a lot, um, but I, I did not find this out in time. I could also have banked a lot more, though if you do bank beyond a certain amount, you end up not going sideways anymore, but actually pushing up. I'm not sure what the dynamics are going on there. I'm not sure if this is the problem with the Kerbal Aerodynamics Unit. Probably is, let, let's be honest, that, that's what most most troubles with this sort of stuff come from or it could be just from the fact that you know there's a delta wing on the side of this um this vessel that's pointed sideways so maybe if we're kind of slide stripping slide slipping with this much of a turn that side edge on my glider could actually be a leading edge i'm not sure uh, as i say it's all, all massive speculation here and we're coming up out of the atmosphere and i'm realizing that maybe this 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 uh, maneuvers a bit of a loss. What I'm going to do is give it one more go round before we quick uh, quick load back to the apoapsis point where I decoupled because I had a feeling when we started this that this really wouldn't go all that well. So coming back down over the solar po uh, solar pole cap, yeah, that's that's exactly what I meant to say. Polar south cap, yeah, no, that's still wrong. But anyway, you know what I'm talking about, and we're going to dive back into the atmosphere, and uh, I'm aiming this time between. Uh, my prograde and my normal vector there, the one that does all the turn. And as you can see, that's quite effective. I'm glad that I'm watching this um, sped up here because at the time I really had no idea how well that was doing. Obviously, we're, we're kind of gliding through. At, I mean, I know it is a thousand meters per second, but we're gliding through at a relatively low velocity here and watching that uh, inclination change in real time was really, really slow. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you saw on the map view, oh, I don't know, 15 seconds ago or so that the uh, trajectory is actually falling a little bit short already now I, I think we can salvage this because well because we're we're using a giant wing right and giant wings are really good at like stretching those trajectories out as far as possible especially if we get up to Apple apps and just give it a little bit of a nudge while we're up there using our RCS or rather that was the plan until I spotted this view here where I noted that I was already well past our Apple apps. I say well past, it was a good hundred meters beyond and when you're flying over a, a portion of the planet, eh, that, that, that's not too great. Uh, and and uh, we're plummeting quite fast, we're losing speed, I'm starting to worry that maybe th this isn't a, a goer. I'm also noti noticing that we're like trying to land in the dark here, and, and basically everything here is telling me that this is going to be uh, a bit of a, 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 a bad landing. Uh, still, I lower down my landing gear, and we're, we're going to try and like swing round and see how close we can get. Maybe pull a few manoeuvres to try and uh, slow off some speed. Uh, but all in all, yeah, I, I'm I'm not feeling confident now. I was I was feeling supremely confident, but right now at this point in the game, I was like, mm, we're going to overshoot by quite a lot. Let's reload. In hindsight, I probably could have done a lot better. I could probably have landed that, but hey, that's the way of the game. Okay, so back to the uh, astronaut complex. Still no new science. Well, no new Kerbals, no new engineers or pilots. Still just a board full of scientists. Uh, I was a little bit hesitant to hire scientists and then get rid of them just to like clear the board out because I thought maybe there was some sort of negative connotation of that. Turns out after asking on Reddit and stuff, no, no problems. Uh, okay, so you will notice that um, on my alarm clock I've got a new alarm for the daylight on Juno. It turns out that's actually a full day on Juno, the three, three days. I don't know why I thought three days would be um, just overnight. It should have been a day and a half. But we're going to let that run and try and let the astronaut complex uh, refresh because th this is what it's all about. I, I really, really need to try and get, get this last crew on the board so that when we land the glider finally, we actually have an next mission to do so that we can prepare for the mission after that. Um, 
obviously that is what this is all about. But no matter how much time warping I do, uh, how many days I wait, we still just end up with this astronaut complex that is full of scientists and no pilots or engineers anywhere. You might notice a recurring th theme in today's episode, it's the absolute lack of any pilots. Uh, I decide with less than a day to go on my alarm, it's probably time to go check to see what's going on here. Uh, glad I did it at this time because it is randomly the time that I really needed to get going. Uh, I did a bit of map checking in between the last cut and this one and it turns out this is exactly where I wanted to be give or take a couple of degrees of inclination and that's all fine we can do that with our RCS up at Apple Apps of course because that is the most efficient time to do that um, so with a little bit of alarm clocking sorting out making sure our maneuver nodes are all good I really need to figure out how to separate my vessel from uh, the pusher there as it turned out I just needed to orientate myself in the right direction and just wait for the orbital uh, paths to take us apart it was actually quite quite a good one uh, the amount of push that our docking port gave was obviously enough to change our orbit significantly enough so watching Ike rise here which of course reminds us that we do have a probe to send to Ike at some point we're gonna have to wait for our orbits to align so that we could send it maybe up and over the top and push it off towards Ike I'm not exactly sure what sort of system we're gonna take there uh, I'm much more concerned about trying to get these ships landed okay so my plan here and I used a um, uh, an aero braking calculator here to figure this out is to get myself like diving down enough through the atmosphere so that my Apple apps over the north North Pole is something like 60 kilometers that should allow me to come back down and into the atmosphere at the right height you'll see on the dawn side so I'm coming down over dusk I want to come back up out of the atmosphere but only with enough speed to bring me up over the North Pole and back into the atmosphere on the other side that was the plan I, I think I did it all right uh, the, I will leave a, a link to the calculator in the doobly doo down below because wow uh, having this sort of technology on hand is very much important if you want to do this sort of precision stuff that I like to do well I say precision stuff this crazy stuff where you skip from one place to another like I like to do that's the sort of stuff you need calculators for but using the last of my RCS well I say the last but using some of my RCS to make sure that I can get my Apple apps in the place where I wanted it to be uh, it was a bit too much over the top of the rovers and stuff which meant that I was going to have the high point over them and that was not what I wanted at all I wanted it halfway between where I am now and where I'm going to be landing obviously because that's the point where you come up and down yeah brilliant Condescension aside, it's time to sort out the manoeuvre nodes to see like where we want to change our inclination. Obviously we're not perfectly lined up and it'll be really good to be able to like turn ourselves around without actually having to like worry too much about the atmosphere. At the same time it would have been really nice to do it all in atmosphere, all our changes and stuff. Beautiful shot over the top North Pole of Juno there by the way. Uh, but yeah, it would have been nice to do all this in atmosphere just using our wing. The problem with that, of course, is the fact that we're not in atmosphere right now. Um, and it's, it's all a little bit inaccurate trying to do it on the other side of the planet, like swing round, be there. Okay, so now you'll see why I'm saying that with hindsight, I should have just went with the first, uh, first landing attempt. Because we have just gone screaming past our landing zone, like hundreds of kilometers like nearly a thousand of meters per second hundreds of kilometers no no one kilometer per second um and we are flying well beyond this is all the point where i was like flying over on our first approach going yeah oh, this is this is looking good but no no let's reload i wish i had just stuck with that because wow we are going fully down towards the south pole now uh so i'm i'm kind of figuring out here how to control my trajectory to tr control my glide every time that I do sort of a power turn you know a bank and pull up uh, I also push my Apple apps up which means that we come more out of the atmosphere uh, and the more out of the atmosphere I am the less control I have with the wing it, it's all a, a nasty feedback cycle that if you get it wrong you send yourself skipping out uh, and if you get it wrong you end up crashing down and losing too much speed so I was trying to trying to really like work this knife edge here uh, and I think I did it quite well uh, I, I, obviously I could have done a lot better uh, now that I've had the practice at this if I was ever going to do this again uh, I would do a lot better uh, and I was like wondering there why taking that science wouldn't do the the last bit of our contract but of course the science has to be done from the surface of Juna not flying on Juna put that together during this flight and I had a long time 
to think about things here. Now, you'll, you'll notice something that I do that I don't normally do. I'm about to start time warping through the atmosphere because this I, I am literally half a planet away. Um, I don't like doing physics warp, mainly because I don't trust my computer. Uh, it's quite a, quite an old thing now, bless it, and it probably has trouble keeping up with the demands of such a modern game as Kerbal. So for reasons of brevity and my boredom as well as yours, I think we're going to do a little jump cut ahead a little bit. Don't worry, there is nothing but this flying. And here we are within 17 kilometers of the actual vessel. It was just straight flying. We lost some speed, we lost some height, but this is what we wanted to do. And now I'm coming down as close to the ground as possible because I want to start bleeding off the speed that I get from dropping down so far into the gravity well. Obviously, um, yeah, coming down in the atmosphere, it's always going to lead to you picking up speed when you have a wing. And wow, I have lots of lots of meters per second that need to be dropped here. Like down at the ground, I'm currently at 100 meters per second, which is a lot. I was wondering, oh, nice little barrel roll there. I was wondering if I could like turn off some of my uh, control surfaces to maybe get a little bit of. A uh, little bit of breakage power. I'm not sure why. I, th I was thinking maybe like Infiniglider was coming in to play this here. But what we're going to do to slow down, after a small reload of course, we're going to take a series of low passes at the floor, trying our best just to like touch our, our wheels, hit the brake at the time. Now the reason I didn't leave my brake on constantly is because of that first explosion there. If I leave my brake on constantly, uh, the vibrations of bouncing across the floor will occasionally kick one of my wheels up, meaning that one side of my vessel has like uh, friction applied to it more than the other. Uh, that then leads to all sorts of flipping technologies, but here we have the landing, brilliantly done if you ask me, and as we cl uh, fly our way over there, or glide our way over there, sorry, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, guys. I will see you next time when we're going to deal with the moon pig. Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it the moon pig. And we're going to try and pick up a third crew so we, we can take three separate crews to the moon and back and get them all the experience that we could ever need. Um, so I'll see you then when we're going to do that. Bye!